So where do the vast majority of these demonic beings originate? We know from scripture the first angel to be cast down to the earth was Lucifer himself, whose spirit entered into a serpent and deceived the parents of the human race, Adam and Eve. He got Eve to question the authenticity of God's word, which in turn provided a foothold in her mind by which Lucifer could bring about rebellion to God's instructions and authority. At this point, sin and death entered into the world as Eve stretched forth her hand and took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and her husband with her. From that moment on, the sin nature passed upon all born through the seed of Adam. Rejection and rebellion against God is indeed in the heart of all men. Satan's deception in the garden was his first assault against mankind. It is through deception he perpetrates lies which lead men down the path of absolute and irreversible destruction. The second siege upon mankind occurred in the days of Noah, where it is recorded. And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born of them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. Genesis 6, 1 through 2 and 4. This event of Noah's day is the reason God took the drastic measures he did in flooding the earth. The reason Noah and his family were chosen to be saved was because they were the only line left unpolluted by this angelic human inbreeding. God flooded the earth not simply because men's thoughts were only evil continually, but also because, with the exception of Noah and his family, the entire world had become corrupted by the children produced as a result of these angels and human women breeding. The book of Enoch goes into this situation at length and gives a precise explanation as to the origin of demonic spirits. The book of Enoch is not an official book in the Western Holy Scriptures, and I do not consider the book inerrant, as I do the books of the Holy Bible. Nevertheless, I draw upon it here for two reasons. First, it has always been a book recognized in the Orthodox Ethiopian Church. And secondly, because the writer of Jude, a book which is part of the Western Holy Bible, refers to Enoch's prophecies regarding the subject of angels and the demonic. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he, or God, hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackest of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these. Jude 6, 12-14 So since the writer of Jude felt Enoch's work was worth referring to, we will now examine some of the things Enoch had to say regarding the origin of demons. It happened after the sons of men multiplied in those days, that daughters were born unto them elegant and beautiful. And when the angels, the sons of heaven, beheld them, they became captivated of them, saying to each other, Come, let us select wives for ourselves from the progeny of men, and let us beget children. Then their leader, Samyeza, said to them, I fear that you may perhaps be indisposed to the performance of this enterprise, and that I alone should suffer for so grievous a crime. But they answered him and said, We all swear and bind ourselves by mutual execrations that we will not change our intentions but execute our 
projected undertaking. Then they swore and bound themselves by mutual execrations. Book of Enoch, chapter 7, verse 1 through 7. Then they took wives, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach, and with whom they cohabitated, teaching them all manner of sorceries, incantations, and the dividing of roots and trees. And the women conceived and brought forth giants whose stature was as much as three hundred cubits. Enoch chapter 7, verses 10 through 12. These devoured all of men's labors until it became impossible to feed them. Then they turned themselves against men in order to devour them. Book of Enoch, chapter 7, verse 13. Then addressing me, he spake and said, Hear, neither be afraid, O righteous Enoch. Ye scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice. Go say to the watchers from the watchtowers of heaven, who have sent you to pray for them, you ought to pray for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have you forsaken the lofty and holy heaven, which endures forever, and have lain with women, having defiled thyselves with the daughters of men, having taken to yourselves wives, having acted like the sons of the earth, and having begotten an impetuous offspring. Ye being spirits holy and possessing of life eternal, have corrupted thyselves with women. Having lusted in the carnal blood, ye have lusted in the blood of men, and ye have done as those of flesh and blood do. These, however, die and perish, therefore I have given them wives, that they may cohabitate with them. That sons may be born of them, and that this might be transacted upon the earth. Therefore I did not make wives for you, because, being spiritual, your place was assigned to heaven. Now the giants who have been born of spirit and of flesh shall be called upon earth evil spirits. And the confines of the earth shall be their habitation. And the spirits of the giants shall be as clouds which shall oppress, fall, contend, and bruise upon earth. Book of Enoch, chapter 15, verses 1 through 9. Though these evil entities may assume any appearance they desire, in their natural state they resemble smoke or clouds, and are referred to as clouds both by Enoch and the writer of Jude. In fact, Jude calls them clouds without rain carried about by the winds. These are the evil spirits of the Nephilim, and their goal, like their fathers, the fallen angels, are to hurt, harm, and destroy the whole of humanity. If so, it would need a strong breeze to travel this fast. But guys' clothes and hair never move, indicating that no wind is blowing.